This lesson is called Little Foxes and Different Spices. Go into Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15 and verse 17. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Verse 17. Until the day break and the shadows flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roe or a young heart, H-A-R-T, upon the mountains of Bether. So he said, come to the prayer closet. Mount Bether, Bether speaks of separation, the mountain of separation. A mountain speaks of exaltation, and the valley speaks of a humble place. The mountain of Bether, meaning that prayer time is really an exalted time. Your private relationship with the Lord in the prayer closet is always a time of peace and rest to the soul. It is truly a place of exalting the soul in the presence of the Lord. He was saying to her in Song of Solomon that you need more division, more separation. You need to spend more time alone because there are some little foxes that need to be taken away because they will spoil your spiritual vine. You know, all foxes burrow in the ground and they don't sleep in the winter time. Little foxes are known to ruin the root of the vine because of how they burrow into the ground. Now the vine speaks of your surrender and these little foxes will eat at your surrender to the Lord. And when you begin to lose your surrender to his headship, no longer does God become head over all things. You begin to question God. You begin to doubt. And that doubt will begin to make you sink into the quicksand of despair. But these little foxes, they eat at your foundation. And our foundation is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and the fire of the Holy Spirit and the waters of his name. The Bible says a foundation that no man can lay other than the Lord Jesus Christ. That's blood, fire, and water. These little foxes also consume the grapes, it said in uh, Song of Solomon 2, verse 15. When they are caught, foxes will play dead. As, as soon as they can, they will jump up really fast and take off running. They are a bit cunning and clever in getting away. In verse 15, it's telling us that we need to put up a Holy Ghost wall around our heart because foxes are sly and deceitful creatures. The word fox in the he Hebrew, this is so powerful. The word fox in the Hebrew means handfuls of time. Wow, handfuls of time. It is so easy to find ourselves giving out handfuls of our energy and strength and interest and affections to unimportant things in life. We have time to do all kinds of things that are foolish in the sight of God. Then at the end of the day, we wonder why we don't have any time to pray or read the word of God. These sly foxes will consume our grapes. Grapes speak of joy in our delight in our spiritual bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christian experience for some can be on the dry side of life because of these little foxes. 
They will spoil your surrender. They will, they will eat and consume your joy when you get all entangled in the things of this life. They will consume your prayer and your study time. And then you find yourself without the life that comes from prayer and study. And you need that. You need the life that comes from prayer and study to consume the death that is out there in the world. The Bible says that death is swallowed up of life. It says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But if you don't have life from from praying and studying, if you don't have that stored up, then the death of this world will swallow up what little life that you might think you have. Then you soon find going on for God a very uneventful experience. In fact, we could call it boring. You will look somewhere else for excitement. The world is dark spiritually. We know that. The world that we live in is very dark spiritually and we live in the world, but we're not supposed to be of the world. So we need all the inner light that we can get so that the world's darkness does not creep inside of our souls and spoil the grapes or the joy of going on for God. Then we find ourselves a little depressed and it looks like the world is having all the fun. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. He said, my words are spirit and they are life. So really, there is no life outside of the word of God. But when we are allowing these little foxes to steal handfuls of our time here and there, then we feel a bit lifeless. We can enjoy a lot of things in life that God has given us that fall under the category of harmless fun. But even when we are trying to enjoy these harmless things, if we don't have the life of the word in us first, then in reality, we can't even enjoy harmless activities without feeling like something is missing. What is missing is the life of the spirit and the word that we should be putting into our souls. You know, we are no longer that person of the world. If we have been born again, then old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Because we are a new creature in Christ. All the world has to offer is external things, and we can no longer survive in that mode of living. The people of the world are born of water only, but we which are born again are born of water and of the Spirit. It says that in John chapter 3 verse 5. But for us who have been born again, we can no longer feed on the things of the world and be happy. But we must have the word in prayer to maintain our spiritual walk with Christ, to have any joy at all. But these little foxes will come in and spoil the grapes or our joy in living for Christ. Notice they are little. They're not big, little handfuls of time. It's the little portions of time we pass, pass out here and there. Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 3, verse 6, I believe. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rows and by the hinds of the field, that you stir not up, nor awake my love, till he please. Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness, like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the powders of the merchant? Wow. Wow. Now, smoke is a symbol of Holy Ghost hatred against sin. And in Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 5, she loved her prayer closet. This is speaking of the bride. 
you know, the Song of Solomon, the book of Song of Solomon is divided into four divisions. And each division speaks of a stage of growth of the spiritual bride. It's a relationship between the Lord Jesus Christ and the believer who grows up to be the bride. And she goes through all these different stages. And in the beginning, she loved her prayer closet and was just concerned about his will. And as a result, it says that she comes out of the wilderness uh, like pillars of smoke. She has this uh, holy hatred against sin. God wants us to hate the sin, but not the sinner. We must learn to separate the sinner from the sin. So easy to hate the person who's committing the sin rather than just hate the sin and love the person. Many times people of faith will hate the person committing the sin when we should always love the sinner and hate the sin. The Bible says, judge not, that ye be not judged. Just remember, without the Lord, we, we would all be in the same situation that others are without God. When you're going on for God and you're dealing with your own fleshly attitudes, should keep you sh it should keep you too busy really to look at other people's faults. It's easy to hide behind the trees in the garden and blame others and not be looking at ourselves in the mirrors of God's word. When you look at a mirror, you don't see someone else's image. You see your own. God's word will show you yourself. It is so easy to become self-righteous that it's a good thing we stumble at times so our focus of attention is on our own imperfections and not others. A righteous man, the Bible says, falls seven times and he gets back up again. But a wicked man will fall back into mischief. You fall to see yourself but you are always falling forward and not backwards. Sometimes for a season, God will allow your flesh to come up and you discover all over again how much you hate the flesh. God puts us in a wilderness experience so we'll come out like she did in Song of Solomon, like pillars of smoke or hatred against the flesh come out hating the flesh but it's a holy hatred this is not self-righteousness because it said here in the word um, like pillars of smoke perfumed with myrrh and frankincense with all powders of the merchant because it's perfumed with humility the myrrh of humility you see that if it were not for God's mercy and grace in your life that you would be no different than anyone else. Without Christ, we are nothing, and we can do nothing. But with him, we can do all things through his strength. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So this hatred for the flesh is perfumed with the myrrh of humility and not fleshy hatred, perfumed with myrrh or humility. And also frankincense. This hatred is um, also perfumed with frankincense. Frankincense speaks of faith, holy hatred with humility and faith. Then in Song of Solomon 3, 6, it said, all powders of the merchant with all the other fragrant spices. So, when she came out of the wilderness or her mountain of separation, of prayer, she came out hating the flesh. And she didn't come out self-righteous. She came out perfumed with the myrrh of humility and frankincense of faith and all powders of the merchants. So let's look and... Um, see some of the ingredients that went into the incense in um, Exodus. 
Let's look at the other powders of the merchants. In Exodus uh, 30, verse 22 through 25, Moreover, the Lord spoke uh, unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh. And then he said also, Sweet cinnamon, also calamus and cassia. Well, cinnamon is a type of goodness. The bride had nine trees in her heart, which go with the nine fruits of the Spirit. Calamus is a picture of gentleness. So you have myrrh of humility, cinnamon of goodness, calamus, gentleness, all found in the heart of the bride. So far, humility, goodness, and gentleness. Exodus 30, verse 24. Also, cassia was one of the ingredients. Cassia in Hebrew means to bend the neck. Cassia speaks also of surrender. So we see goodness, humility, gentleness, and surrender. Israel was God's natural bride and was a picture of the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God gave Israel the holy pillars of smoke from the brazen altar and altar of incense. So she came up with her pillars of smoke, demonstrating that she was a holy nation separated for God. This was a picture of the perfume smoke with all these ingredients that we should get as we come out of our wilderness experience with God. As we go round and round from humility to exaltation, from the valley to the mountain, as his will is turning in our lives, we should be getting these spices in our heart. It's hard to allow God to do his work if we have a bad attitude towards suffering. Christianity does not come without a cross to bear. We need to remember that. There's always that cross to bear. We, if we call ourselves believers and Christians, then we are also cross bearers. Jesus said, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. So this hatred was perfumed with humility. We need those spices to keep running on with joy in our hearts. This is such an important lesson and it really, as I sit here sharing this with you, it is a tremendous reproof to me because sometimes I don't have this holy smoke of hatred against sin without having this self-righteous attitude when I look at the people in the world and all the things that they do. Then you begin to start hating the people. We need to be perfumed. Our smoke needs to be perfumed with the myrrh of humility. Hate the sin, not the sinner. Sometimes when I meditate on the Lord, I'll go outside on the patio and I'll enjoy the burning of incense because its smoke is full of fragrance that seem to enhance my spiritual senses. In Exodus 30, all these fragrances were mixed with oil or the Holy Ghost. In uh, verse 35, he said they should be tempered together. Tempered in Hebrew means salt. These were all the ingredients of the incense at the altar of incense. Then he mentions more spices to be tempered together, mixed with salt. And the next one is stacked, S-T-A-C-T-E, stacked. And stacked were the tears from, myr from the myrrh tree. They used myrrh as a painkiller years ago. Humility tears. That's why they offered Jesus myrrh at the cross, but he refused to take it. When our pride is wounded, if we'll take a dose of spiritual myrrh, it will take away the pain. The minute we humble ourselves, we quit hurting. When we deaden our pride, 
then we won't feel the devil's arrows of torment. Also, there was this anaka. Anaka was also a spice, uh, an ingredient in the spice. Anaka was a shell they gathered from the sea, and Anaka fed on the spikenard, and it gave that shell the same fragrance. And spikenard has always been a symbol of peace. Then in verse 34, he said, take galbanum. Okay, galbanum had a supporting power that made the fragrance last longer. He said to use frankincense, which speaks of faith. So this was all mixed for the altar of incense. Can you imagine how wonderful the air smelled in the holy place? Where these spices were being burned at the altar of incense, which speaks of our prayer life. Now this was some of the powders of the merchants. Exodus 30 verse 36, he says, where I, where I will meet with thee, it shall be unto you most holy. That word meet, M-E-E-T, means espouse or court, where I will court with you. God was saying the same thing here as he was saying in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 17, to come away or to meet, or to meet, same message, or to court with thee in your prayer closet. God wants to court you in the prayer closet. Why did God want to take his bride to the mountain of separation or the mountains of Bether? Why did he want to take her to the prayer closet and put a Holy Ghost wall around her heart? Because he wanted to court or meet with her. When we come with this pillar of smoke or holy hatred and perfume spices, he says, I'll court you there. Court you. You know, God is love and he wants us to love. He created us in his image. He does want us to hate the things of the world because they are so damaging. He wants us to hate sin because sin has such terrible repercussions, but he does not want us to hate the sinner. Remember Jesus, he ate with sinners. Of course, the self-righteous Pharisees and Sadducees, they judged him for that. But Jesus loved the sinner. He hated the sin, but he loved the sinner. He said, I want to court with you there. Then you begin to feel the bridegroom love um, and your heart will be stirred all over again. We will not be so concerned about anything else because we'll be in a secret chamber with the Lord. In Matthew 6, verse 6, it says this, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. He will build a Holy Ghost wall between you and the world when we go into his secret chamber where only you and him are there and the world is shut out. When you shut the door, you are shutting everything out except seeking him. Song of Solomon 3 verse 6, he said of the bride, that she came out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke or holy hatred against sin. Yet this hatred is perfumed with the myrrh of humility and the frankincense of faith and all the powders of the merchant. He's the merchant that clothes us with these beautiful, sweet-smelling spices, not to draw attention to ourselves but to draw attention to him. You know, Lucifer in the beginning had, had spices that God had given him, and he used these spices to draw attention to himself, and God cast him down. He that exalts himself shall be humbled or abased. That's the principle. And it is as sure as the law of gravity. What goes up must come down. And when a merchant owns the powders, there's a price to pay to get them. 
They don't come easy, but we must do some trading to get these spices that is trading, that is actually trading our flesh for his nature. He wants us to lay down our fleshy ways. This is the price we must pay to grow our spiritual stature. We need some stature so he can anoint it with his sweet perfume. Exodus uh, 30, verse 37. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Wow. So God is not going to hand over these spices to our flesh so we can go out and use our pride to stretch out these spices and perfume for our own exaltation. This is It's for the Lord. That's the devil's imitation, false teachings in the land, perfume with pride, and they get a big following. You don't hear much about crucifying the flesh in these speaker-friendly churches, but you will hear all about becoming prosperous. These teachers tickle the ears of the people. They give them what they want to hear. Jesus turned to the multitude and said, if you want to follow me, you must take up your cross and then follow me. And the Bible says they all forsook him. People love to hear about these spices, but they don't want to pay the price to get them. When we go down and crucify the flesh and let the spiritual man come up, then the Lord will see that price tag and he will give us this perfume or these spices because then he can put it on the spiritual man and the spiritual man's not going to use it to show off the flesh. The spiritual man will exalt the Lord and bring attention to the Lord Jesus. Song of Solomon 3, 7, and 8. Solomon was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the he was the millennial king. Second Chronicles 26, um, let's see what that has to say. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord, his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. Eighty priests of the Lord that were valiant men. So we see that the valiant men were these priests. Now remember the bride just got out of the wilderness, uh, which was a night season, and she came out with a holy hatred against her own will, a holy hatred against sin, not the sinner. She was perfumed with spices. Song of Solomon 3, it says, Behold his bed, which is Solomon's. Sixty valiant men are about it, a valiant of Israel. His bed speaks of refreshment, repose. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I'll give you rest. Unto me, unto means under. Come under my rule and authority, then I will give you rest. So we just read in Second Chronicles 26, uh, Uzziah tried to usurp uh, authority of the priesthood. He was blessed and pride, the pride of revelation set in and he thought there was nothing he couldn't do. And it says, as long as he sought God, he was made to prosper. And then we found out who the valiant men were, the priest, those that offer incense. So during Uzziah's day, no one but the family of Aaron could come into the holy place and burn incense. The priesthood was shut up, and only the family of Aaron was it open to. But now the Bible says God has made us all to be kings and priests. Anyone that comes through the blood, fire, and water may come in. Your valiant men are those who labor in prayer. Song of Solomon uh, 3 of 7. When we pray and we put up this Holy Ghost wall around our heart, 
will find a place of rest. We will find his bed, his bed or his rest right in the middle of our prayer closet. So let the Holy Ghost be a valiant man through us and fight and war against the, the powers of darkness, rather, and our own flesh to keep it under subjection. Song of Solomon 3.8, you learn to be an expert in war in your prayer closet. So let the Holy Ghost be a valiant man through us and fight in war against the powers of darkness and our own flesh to keep it under subjection. Song of Solomon 3.8, it reads, They all hold swords, be an expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of fear in the night. So you learn to be an expert in, in war in your prayer closet. Sword means the word on your thigh. Thigh means procreating power, speaks of the loin section of the body. That part of the body that carries the quickened seed. These valiant men or prayer warriors are carrying a quickened word. There's a time when you go into your prayer closet that it takes a quickened word in order to pray. The more we read and study God's word, the more we'll use God's word when we come into our prayer closet. Can't use something unless it's quickened. If we want a sword, then let your belly overflow with God's word. When you have a sword on your thigh, you'll always be ready for war. In Song of Solomon 3, it says, Fear in the night. They have, um, and they all, hold, they all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of fear in the night. When it's nighttime and you're going through a night season spiritually, this is when we need to walk softly and be in your prayer closet or Mount Bether. Song of Solomon 3, 9 through 10, King Solomon made himself a chariot of the wood of Lebanon. He made the pillars thereof of silver, the bottom thereof of gold, the covering of it purple, the mist thereof being paved with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. Now she's finding out about his chariot of love, and she begins to tell the daughters of Jerusalem about this uh, chariot. How is this love chariot made? He said, the wood of Lebanon, cedar wood or cleansing power. In Numbers 19, cedar was used in the offering of a red heifer. Song of Solomon 3.10 says, Pillars of silver. Silver speaks of redemption, redemption money. Uh, silver speaks of man. Gold speaks of deity. Purple, royal rule and reign. All this was given to her in her prayer closet is the point. And it was all because she went to Mount Bether or the mountain of division. She separated herself. Come out of her, my people. God has a new revelation of his love chariot to give us in our prayer closet. This vision kept her going on until she came into a marriage relationship in the fourth chapter of Song of Solomon. So anyway, Song of Solomon 3 talks about the love chariot. This is a courtship chariot for everyone willing to go to Mount Bether. This is why he wanted to, to bring uh, her to the mountains of Bether or the mountains of separation. We will never get a vision that of the bridegroom love if we take it easy in the wilderness on our bed of ease. It is so easy not to pray and to let the little foxes just come in and spoil the vine or our surrender and eat up the grapes or our joy in going on for God. These handfuls of time here and there just doing things that are foolish in the sight of God. Even ministers find themselves working in the ministry all the time and not spending enough time 
uh, on Mount Bether or their prayer closet. We need to get our first love back. Then the other things will fall in place. It is so easy to entertain ourselves with the pleasures of this life. But when we do, and we stay away from our prayer closet or Mount Bether, we will never get a vision of the bridegroom love and his love chariot. These can be harmless pleasures and not sinful things, but these uh, things can become little foxes that spoil the vine or our surrender to go to the prayer closet and to the word of God. She went to the watchman, it says, saying, Have you seen him whom my soul loveth? She went to different churches and preachers trying to find the bridegroom when she needed to be in her prayer closet or Mount Bether where he really wanted her to, to be so he could court with her or meet with her. Many times when we're feeling something missing in our souls and things are just not the way they ought to be, it's because you need to go to Mount Bether. Separate yourself from people, places, and things and get away with him and pray. Then he will reward you in the word by revealing things you've never seen before that will excite your soul and bring your soul a whole lot of delight, grapes. God said he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Head for the prayer closet and let God reveal unto you his chariot of love. Song of Solomon 3.11, then she gets busy telling others what was revealed to her in in the separation. In verse 11, go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, and behold, King Solomon with the crown, wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals and in the day of the gladness of his heart. Crown, what crown did his mother offer him the day that he was born? The crown of humility. Espousals, now it's plural, espousals, plural, engagement. This was a picture of the Lord Jesus. Jesus was crowned with humility the very day that he was born. God in the flesh. In the flesh, he espoused suffering. He restricted himself to a human body to begin with. The God of the universe who feeds all things is coming down in suffering hunger. And he also espoused surrender. Here, the king of the universe who gives orders to everything, gives orders to the, the fish and other creations. You know, he gave an order to the ravens to feed Elijah. He spoke to a well to swallow Jonah up and spit him out after three days and nights. He even proved it in the days of his flesh. He told Peter to go and take out a fish and open its mouth and you'll find the tax money there. And that was Matthew 17, 27. Jesus was God and he spoke to that fish and said there is a certain piece of money by a shore. And he's telling the fish, pick up this piece of money by a certain shore, pick it up and Take it to Peter, open your mouth and let him have the coin. So here is God in the flesh having to surrender to a fleshy mother and father, earthly mother and father. The spousals crowned with suffering and humility. The one who ruled the whole universe having to come under into obedience to his human parents. So the bride came out preaching the crucified Christ or there is life in separation, life in a solitary relationship with the Lord. She didn't say, come and see my king and all his exaltation, but she said, look at his crown of humility. Let me tell you about Mount Bether and his love chariot. Now, she didn't mind giving up the bed of ease and the broadways where she was seeking the pleasures uh, of worldly entertainment because now she had a vision of the bridegroom's love chariot 
that carried her away to the mountain of satisfaction in his word and in his spirit. And we throw a fit when we have to suffer because we lack a vision of his espousals or the things he had to suffer as the creator and the king of the universe. In the prayer closet, he'll give us a vision of his espousals and love chariot. So she came out saying, come and get a vision of his humility in the prayer closet. A lot of times the cross gets heavy and it's hard to bear until we get a new vision of his humility or his espousals, the things he had to suffer. If we keep going on, we'll espouse the cross with gladness in our heart. It was said of the Lord that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Everyone has a cross, but it's our pride of revelation that makes us think that our cross is bigger than someone else's cross. He never complained about suffering for us, not once. He did it in the gladness of his heart. In Hebrews 12, verse 2, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. He looked beyond the cross to resurrection morning. He looked beyond the cross to the time that when the word would be broken up and moved into the hearts of people all over the world and how people would shine like the stars of heaven. He endured because he had a vision Without a vision, my people perish. Going to your prayer closet will help you get a vision. A new vision of his humility that carries a fragrance that makes living for him exciting and every day can be a romance going on for God if we will take heed to the call to Mount Bether and get alone with him in our prayer closet where there is true peace, and rest. That's where our spiritual bed is, is in our prayer closet. And we really cannot bypass this principle, even though it is crucifixion to the flesh, but it is also exaltation to the soul. Mm -hmm. Come now, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest unto your souls. So the moral of the story is that God wants to give us gladness. He wants us to He wants us to have a holy hatred against sin and not, not the sinner, but the sin in order to have a holy hatred and come out of our prayer closet with these with this uh, pillars, the pillars of smoke of this uh, holy hatred against sin. But this uh, holy hatred is perfumed with the myrrh of humility, frankincense of faith, cinnamon of goodness, uh, all these wonderful ingredients that are in the uh, altar of incense. So we come out like a sweet smelling savor unto God. And we can look out into the world and we can love the, the sinner. And we can hate the sin, but we have enough of the myrrh of humility that we can love the soul inside that person because we are all in the same boat. If it wasn't for the mercy of the Lord holding back what we deserve, which is hell, and the grace of God giving us what we, what we don't deserve, which is his salvation, we would all be in trouble. So we need to be grateful. But we cannot have this holy hatred with um, perfumed with myrrh and all these other spices without going into our prayer closet. He said, I will meet with you there. That's where I will court you. That's where I will speak to you and quicken the word to you. Then when you come out of your prayer closet, you have a Holy Ghost wall between you and the world and you feel that rest in your soul and you're able to share the word of God with others and you're able to, even when you're going out to the store, you're looking at people and 
or everywhere, people are all around you. You love the sinner. You see life differently. You see it through the eyes of his love chariot, through the eyes of love and not the eyes of self-righteousness, that you are better than they are because you're not, not without Christ. So when you feel that something missing inside, things of the world, they're just not fun anymore then that may may be your call to come away to the mountain of separation, to the mountains of Bether. Oh.